Okay, this is Nitro 7.2 um, Git First Element. In Nitro 7, remember, we're working with the array lists. Write a program that adds the numbers 1 through 5 to the numbers array list and then prints out the first element in the list. So with an array list, we use the add method. So we have an array list called numbers. So we're going to do numbers.add1. And we're going to repeat that a whole bunch of times numbers.add2 and numbers.add3, numbers.add4, numbers.add5. Adding the numbers 1 through 5 to the array list called numbers and then print out the first number in the array. So system in the array list. System.out.println and if this um, if this array list was an array we could print out the first item by doing this. But with an array list, instead of the brackets, we got to use the get method with parentheses. So get the item at index zero, that will print out the first item from the list. And I think that's all we had to do there. All right, so now 7.2.6. an array list of even numbers. So create an array list of only even numbers from 2 to 100. And they have a method here already that's going to print our array. So array list, um, let's call it my list equals new array list. There's the basic syntax, syntax and this is going to be even numbers from 2 to 100. So let's call this an array list of type integer. An array list of type integer. And then for int i equals 0 uh, from 2 to 100 i less than or equal to 100, i, not i plus plus, but i plus equals 2, um, my list dot add, add the number i to the list. Oh, but they said the numbers from 2 to 100, so I think I want this to start at 2 instead of starting at 0. Oh, and my list is supposed to be called, not my list, my list is supposed to be called, it looks like evens, according to what they already have written here. So let's call the list evens. And let's see if they print out correctly. That looks like all the even numbers from 2 to 100. So that should check out fine. I should mention there's another way to do this. I could say for int i equals 1, i less than or equal to 50, i plus plus, and I could do evens dot add i times 2. So i is going from 1 to 50, but every i we multiply by 2, that'll give us the integers from uh, 2 to 100. That should work just as well. Okay. On to 2.7.8, the teacher class list. So it says you don't need to change anything here. They're creating three student objects. So here's our student class, which has um, instance variables, name and grade. So they're using this constructor to construct three student objects. System.out.println student.printClassList. So in the student class, we have a public static method called print class list. So using the existing student class, 
create a static array list called class list. A static array list. Public static array list. Class list equals new array list like that. And this is an array list of students. We're creating an array list called class list of students. So in here, before we did integer, this time I'm going to do student. This is an array list of object student. And not only that, they say, add a student to the class list whenever a new student is created. So this constructor creates a new student. So as soon as that student is created, we're going to say class list dot add this. So that will add the student that we just created. In the structure, you will have to add that student to the array, array list. We just did that. And don't change this. Implement class list there. We did that. And I think we're good to go. Hopefully all these students will print out. Okay, I think we're done with that one. And now we're on to the last part of 727.2.3, the teacher class list method. So it says we don't have to change anything here. Now that the class list array has been implemented, we need to create methods to access the list items. So they brought this over, it looks like, from the previous um the previous exercise class list add this that's all looking good there so we need to create the following static methods here so public static um returns the last student so we are returning a student object so we're going to say public static student get last student. And so we are going to return the student who is in the class list, list array. We're going to get the item at the last index. And the last index for an array or an array list the last index is the name of the array dot size minus one. If it was an array, it would be the name of the array dot length minus one. But we want to return the name of the array dot size minus one. And we're using the get method, get that student at that index, and we're going to return that. So that's the get last student method. Then we need a public static uh, get size that returns the size of the student list. So we're going to say int get class size, which is simply going to return the class list dot size. That one was pretty straight. So we want a public static. I don't think we're going to return anything here. So I'm going to say void add student at integer index and a student object named student. So they've already created a student, like let's say Annie. They've created a student. And now we want to put that student at a particular location. So well, I lost where I was here. Add. So now our class list, we're going to add 
at the index they've provided as a parameter, we're going to add the student object that they've provided as a parameter. But also, we need to remove the last student from the list. So we're going to say remove the last student. And again, the last student is the student at this index. The class list dot size minus one. So in other words, our user is going to create a new student. And when the new student is created, Trevor will be placed at the end. But then we want to add Trevor in spot two. So now Trevor is going to be in spot index two and at the end, which is why after that, after he is added at spot two, we need to remove him from the end. So that's why this line of code right here. And then a get student index public static int get student. Oh, sorry, public static string get student at an integer index. And so we're just going to return the class, the class list dot get the student at whatever index they give us. That will get the student, but we don't want to return the student object. We want to return the student name. So this whole expression here gives us the student object at their index. Then on that student object, we're going to say get name. Okay, so student get name returns the name. So let's see if all of this runs without error, first of all. Oh, this does not look good right here. Get last student returns the name of the last student. Mess that one up. Get last student returns the name of the last student. So this whole thing is the student object of the last student. Then we want to say get name. So something like that. I think this is going to work OK. Um, I just wanted to say both this line and this line can be a little bit confusing. So I want to break one of them down just to make it clear what all is going on here. Create an index, which I will call last index. And the last index is the size of the class list minus one. Then let's create a student object called last student. And last student will be, let's look at the class list and let's get the student who is at location last index. Now that we have the student, we can say string last student name. Since we already have the last student as a student object, we can say last student dot get name. And then we can return last student name. That will work exactly the same, but that's broken down in steps to hopefully make it a little bit easier to follow. So first, we figure out what the last index is. Let's call that last index. Then we get the student who is at location last index from the class list. Once we have that student object, then we can do that student object dot get name and, re and, and that gives us the name of that student as a string and then we can return that string. This statement here is doing all of that in one line. Figure out the last index, then get the student from the class list 
who is at that index. And then once you have that student, which is all of this, then do the dot get name method on that student to get the string that represents that student's name. And then we're returning that string. So that's all four of those steps wrapped up into one. Just in case, sometimes when things are put on one line, it's a little bit hard to follow what's going on there. But there's actually four things going on there. Figuring out the last index, getting the student from the class list who is at that last index. Then once we have that student object, get the name of that student. And then once we have the name of that student, return the name of that student. Anyway, that's it for Nitro 7.2.